All right, welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube for the next deck, Bant Value, which is a deck I am certainly very excited to play that I think uh, has a lot of potential. Um, there are just so many cards to play in the band colors, and so finding the right shell is going to be pretty, uh, pretty tough. But I like what everything that we have in here, and so I'm trying, you know, a lot of four ofs here. Um, this is really just kind of a Militia Bugler deck where we have tons of creatures we can gain with Militia Bugler. I don't have Wild Growth Walker and Merfolk Branch Walker in here. I'm going with the, uh, these other two drops of the new ones with Growth Chamber Guardian and Incubation Druid instead. Um, so we'll see how, like, not having Wild Growth Walker, if that turns into be a problem. But, um, uh, you know, I, I like Biogenic Ooze and Hydroid Crisis a bunch. I could certainly see Hydroid Crisis not turning into a four of like I, I could definitely see hydro crisis being a, a card that's not a four of uh in the future um no no hadana's climb um but that was certainly a card i i considered i i, I wouldn't mind having one hadana's climb in here at all um and i think i like the one night of autumn main deck you know we're, we're trying out one of those in the main um have some other anti-aggro cards in the, in the sideboard with shalai and lyra and other Night of Autumns. I'm using Seal Away instead of Baffling End. A lot of people are playing Baffling End these days. I like Seal Away because uh, Flyers can certainly be a problem for me, especially like Crackling Drake. And so I, I want more uh, removal for like Crackling Drake, for example, or opposing Lyra Dawnbringers if we play against Angel decks. And so I'm going with Seal Away instead of Baffling End there. Um, I also kind of want Settle the Wreckage a little bit uh, for Golgari matchups, but... I uh, didn't really find room for it, so let's uh, go ahead and try out some Bant value. Boom. Four ooze seems a bit heavy with those planeswalkers, but the thing is those ooze are amazing. And we have, you know, we got the four land of elf and four incubation druid that help ramp us, and playing ooze after ooze is... Uh, really a way to go over the top of opponents. So our deck, our deck on paper does a good job of going over the top with the Biogenic Ooze and Hydroid Crisis. Um, so theoretically we may have other decks go under us, which is a little bit of a worry. The tapped green source. At least this planes looks sweet. Mono blue is certainly a matchup that that I'm worried about, and that's a mono blue could be tough. <laughs> value saying the deck is value that refers to um, a deck with a lot of creatures that uh, either gain value over time from enter the battlefield effects, or sorry, they either have enter the battlefield effects that gain value or they gain value over time by being on the battlefield. So they're all creatures that, um, yeah, that gain value over time or immediately. All right, well now I'm not nearly as concerned about our opponent's deck as I was just a little bit ago. Does not look like mono blue aggro. With the forest, I thought I thought for sure it was just Merfolk. You know, like you know, like blue green Merfolk is, is a deck. I guess it is Merfolk. There's just an oaken form and there's a swamp. Hmm. So if I... Hmm. I guess I just go Night of Autumn, destroy the deeper waters. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and adapt so I can have even more mana for the next turn, and I'll just go Night of Autumn, destroy those deeper waters. See, we have removal in the main deck. Okay. 
Auto tap with the incubation druid is really dangerous. That is true. Oh, they're trying to adapt it again. That doesn't work. Yep, gotta be careful. Uh, well, that's that's how it has to happen. They, it, you have to tap both druids there and have the one useless mana because this only adds three mana of one color. So you can't add a green and a white. So we had to use one to add like a green and the other add a white and you know, like the other one adds three. So that's, that's what has to happen. Um, so right now it's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I can just go Krasis for eight or I can wait a turn and Krasis for two more and play Vivian. I think I want to wait a turn and play this Vivian. So let's go, let's add three, four, five, adapt. I didn't let them come to me. And I have the Lana Werolf that gets the chump block for the Vivian Reed. We could certainly find, like, Biogenic Oozes would certainly be really nice for us. Well, they're attacking with the Merfolk Mistbinder, so we get to kill that. That's, that's big game. Unless, do they have instant speed stuff? No. Most wounds can heal. <laughs> so even though we... Even though Orlando Werewolf died, we still get I've to Krasis for like you. a million. So, for 10. Stephanie Clarion interacts with Haunt of the High Tower. Isn't Haunt of the High Tower like a 3 4? Oh, no, no, it's a 3 3. So, yes, no, it will kill it. Yeah, Haunt of the High Tower is a 3 3. Like, unless it has counters on it. You know, Defting Clarion just deals three damage, so any creature, toughness three or less. <clears throat> and we can just crane the, we can chain, sorry, we can chain these crasises together. me and you strike nature oh, gosh meet my newest friend I don't I can't play all the things I have Oh, there's the Biogenic Ooze. I wanted that one. Alright, let me just grab that. That's what I wanted with the tick up with Vivian, because I wanted to play double ooze. Casual attack for 10. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it, it would kill. Yeah, it would kill the. Uh... Yeah, I'd kill it. Ooh, that's too hot. Tatiova? That's a cool merfolk.
They just wanted to, <laughs> this guy just wanted to play his free to play deck. Well, probably shouldn't spend a thousand gold to enter the the competitive constructive constructed queue. <laughs> they just wanted to kill the Vivian. Alright, what do we want to sideboard against Merfolk? The Knight of Autumn ended up being good there, destroying that Deep Root Waters. Not sure it would be the... Um, I should have let him kill Vivian. <laughs> Um, I mean, I can certainly play, like, Seal Away's Binding, Shalai, Lyra. Not sure if it's that necessary. It's probably necessary. <laughs> and then we have like this song playing when we just like making us sound like a bully We got turn two bugler. Wrong card. So, you know, we are one land away from being able to go, like, I'm, I want to play Shalai next turn and then Lyra. We need to draw a land in one of the next two, two draws. They did switch to Band. That's a good, good call. Yeah, they had a Swamp last turn. They liked our, our Band plan. Alright, I think I'm just going to Jade Light. Make sure we get that land drop. Play the Temple Garden untapped. Not necessarily make sure, but help out. <laughs> Five color merfolk sweet stuck. It's at least four color merfolk. We just need to get this red source in here so it can be five color. Yeah, better our odds at the very least. I feel like Uzin. Uzin's fun. What does that do? Four mana to put a counter on stuff? You move counters around? Cool. Our opponent's playing some Merfolk. They're playing Simic, Splash, Orzov, Merfolk. Yes, Ooze is really good. And getting it down early like this, uh, you know, just going to help grow our creatures.
So I can trade Ooze for Shapers of Nature if they attack by double blocking with Ooze and Bugler. Cool, is there if you're playing a league with the deck? Can confirm it's fun, awesome. <laughs> We're cruising for an oozin. Our opponent's cards are pretty good. Okay, there we go. There's a Mythic. I was going to say, that the problem is is we're playing Mythics, and Mythics wins, win games of standard. But our opponent's about to get a Mythic. Nice. Nice. Um... Hmm. Well. So if I go with another ooze, the oozes will start growing really, really quickly. Um, I could also go Shalai and then be able to start activating Shalai if we draw another land. So th those are the two options I'm considering. Play Shalai and then be able to start activating it. But that doesn't let us go wide, really. Yeah, these, these oozes just get so big. Let's go with the other ooze. Um, so Kumena does a whole lot of things. So it's tap three to draw. Tap another one to make Kumena unblockable. And uh, you can tap five Merfolk to put a counter on each Merfolk you control. So they can start growing their Merfolk pretty quickly, too. Like, they get to get one counter a turn. We're getting two on our, on our oozes. Oh, they're going draw route. Okay. Well, they the, the Kumena was on their library. We knew about it on top of their library, but... I hit Diamond just now. Way to go, Onar. Wait, how did that thing get a counter? Oh, right, Shaper. Hmm. Yeah, sleep would be bad. We need to... Make some attacks here. We need to gain some life. Yeah, Resplendent would be better than Shalai here. For sure. I could have just played Hydroid Crisis to be able to chump block with Hydroid. This unblockable Kumen is really rough. What's up, Jake? That's true. Cannot use sleep whenever I have Shalai in play. That's a good point.
So they so that land gives them eight mana, so they can uh, they can pay four and put two counter, so they can add two counters to creatures they control. That's a very big Jade Light Ranger. The format's not doomed at all, Belderon. Mono Red did awesome at the at the last week one open also. It always does. So this is twelve unblockable. They go to 17. Well, sorry, the three is unblockable. But it's 12 there. I mean, I can just regain nine with Shalai and Lyra. This is no blocks. Yeah, they go to 17, but I, they're dead. Like, 17 blocking three creatures doesn't save them. Like they just left themselves dead. They need to just keep their they need to keep their Jade Light Ranger back to block. No, we don't know I don't know what, what my opponent's doing with this white mana. They also played a swamp game one, and I have no idea what they're doing with that swamp either. So they're just a a Simic deck that just is splashing ores off. And that is a good point. There's only nine nine rounds and nobody's 10-0. That's a good point. Nobody can be 10-0. A double block? Interesting. Uh, what decks have impressed me this week? Um, real impressed with Mardu Angels. Um, but I certainly think these Bant decks... Bant has, like... We were talking about this before. Bant has, like, all the cards to be incredibly good. Alright, we are 1 and 0. Oh. Kind of an easier match to start off the day with band value here. That was a pretty cool game, though. This is what I do right here, Jake. Uh, I am a full-time streamer. You can find me here every single day from 3 to 10 Eastern Time. I think we're going a little late today. It's already 8.30, and we are only just starting our third deck out of four. Lord Zuzan, welcome to the stream. Sub number 18 on the day. Ah, uh, Jake, thank you so much for that sub. I really do appreciate that, of course. That is sub number 19 on the day. So one more and we're cracking open a pack. If you also want to get in this type armada, Endless Chorus, you are amazing. Thanks, Endless Chorus. That gets us to 20. All right, so Drake's, like I mentioned before, Drake's is something I'm worried about, especially for the game one. We have more in the sideboard. Let's keep this hype going. Belderon also getting us to 21 subs on the day. Currently at uh, 56, according to the number here. Subs until the next 12-hour 
Stream. All right, where's our Vivians? How do we find Vivian? Bugler doesn't find Vivian. Um. Let me go double two drop. And I can't. I can't even sub for. Or sorry, I can't even stream for 24 hours. All right, it's actually 55. This is the correct number. Just updated there. If you sh shout for a Guru card enough, Vivian will appear. Guru! Let's see if that works. Hmm. If we just got to land there, I was going to be able to at least Krasis for four. Um. I can still just Krasis for three. I can play a Johnny, tick up on Growth Chamber Guardian, Incubation Druid. Yeah, we we just draw on like, you know, not the part of our deck we want against is a Drake's. <laughs> not the part of the deck we want here. Um I mean I can survive another turn, but I can't really survive the turn after that, I don't think. I guess I'm just gonna crace this for three and see what happens. I won't just concede. Uh Panthro Moo. Reselling for the third month in a row. Alright, well, there's Vivian. Yeah, isn't that in the info overlay thing awesome? So, yeah, you can see everything about what's going on. Sub number 22. Alright, that's game. Alright, so we were bringing in... Bring in quite a bit here. Let's bring in these Sealaways, the kill Drakes, Bindings, kill Drakes, Dawnbringer blocks Drakes pretty well, Disdainful Stroke counters Drakes, um, Knight of Autumn coming on out. I think I'm just cutting Buglers. Yeah, Buglers don't really seem too necessary. Buglers can find more Krasi. Um... Do I, do I want Negate in this matchup? Shalai doesn't match up against the Drakes too well. Shalai does protect Dawnbringer. Oh, Kersephius, you're a little behind. Who's gets big quickly, though, and, and helps us race. I Maybe mean, we can't play the oozes with the Dawnbringers and the Vivians and everything. Alright, I'm going to just throw a random negate in here. Yeah, we brought in a lot of cards that are not Bugler hits, so Buglers are just going to come on out here. Yeah, Disdainful Stroke's mostly just for Crackling Drake, I suppose. I suppose it's not too good against a lot of the rest of their deck. But I, I really want a lot of answers to their Drakes. Even if they're not the best answer. Yeah, they could certainly have Ral. Um, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have Disdainful Stroke because it's because you know, like Niv Mizzet's like another card they could have, but obviously we cannot counter Niv Mizzet, so that doesn't work.
If I play Incubation Druid there, uh, I can have Vivian next turn. But I like turning this Growth Chamber Guardian into a 4-4 and, and pressuring them uh, while they're kind of stumbling around here. I think we're gonna get this game. Opponent has not had too good a hand. I think they mold a five. I think. No, we're we're a, a Vivian deck. You know, I'm playing four Vivians. Vivian is just really good, so I don't really want a Mortal Sun in my deck with Vivians. Loving the look of this deck. Is it is Time Stream Navigator a good budget option for this deck in paper? No, if you want a, a budget option for the deck in paper. Uh, I would recommend playing Merfolk Branch Walker and Wild Growth Walker. I'd recommend having those in the deck. Um, Vivian could get spell pierced. I could activate. I could just adapt the Incubation Druid um, and attack for seven. But I'm going another four four. More four fours. We don't need to leave mana for seal away. They don't have haste creatures. We wouldn't have to. We don't have to worry about seal away at all until they have a creature and want, would want to attack. That's a brand new beacon bolt. Now I don't have to worry about uh, Vivian getting spell pierced, at least. Um, hmm. Would you balance comes? All right. I was just gonna play the Vivian there, hold up negate with the other mana and the Incubation Druid, and attack him for four, put him down to four. Lyra's not good against. Uh, Lyra's not too good against that spell they had, Beacon Bolt. The crew call worked. There we go. Uh, yeah, Lyra, you know, gets easily answered one for one with the Beacon Bolt and doesn't really gain us any value there. Yeah, maybe I should be playing Disdainful Stroke. Knight of Autumn as a 4-3 does, does attack through Drake's. Hmm. Problems if I, I don't love a lot of these cards. Like this is just kind of a matchup that I don't love. Um, yeah, maybe I just negate. Just have a bunch of negates. I guess we'll try that. We'll try negate over disdainful stroke. Because really disdainful stroke's countering one card. Negate can counter a lot of things, even though they're not things that are nearly as as that good. Uh, nearly as useful to counter. That one card. In Crackling Drake, the Disdainful Stroke counters is a wonderful card to counter. I 
Yeah, and negate can help us resolve Vivian, or can like counter a dive down that, like w while we're trying to trying to kill like one of their things and they dive down their their threat, we can negate that. That's important. Hey, Eddie. Hmm. If I don't play Growth Chamber Guardian now, we're just waiting. If I play it now, it's weak to a shock. Like, I basically wait till turn 5, play Growth Chamber Guardian, activate it kind of thing. I'm gonna go ahead and play it now. I think we should play Absorb in the sideboard. I suppose that's an option. Hmm. I feel like our opponent wants me wants us to activate Growth Chamber Guardian and then they're gonna shock it in response. I'm gonna display this Jade Light. I could, of course, just pass the turn uh, there and hold up the activation again. That's the card I want. But Jade Light's too good. Yeah, Reddick wins can certainly get you to Mythic. Really hope they don't counter Vivian. Yeah, I think our opponent sideboard into a, a much more controlling deck. Absolutely. Hooray! Wild and the wilds are my shield. All right. So they got four cards in hand. What you got? What you got? Up. Yeah, I've made decks with transformational sideboards before. Yeah. There's the Drake. Sir Drake's a lot. I would love to have a negate right here where I could have binding plus negate. I, I really want to binding the Drake. Um, I'm going to try the Vivian Minus. I, I suspect this is getting protected. Um... Spell Pierce. Hopefully this works. All right. Got the first strike down. Would have liked to binding the other Drake. No one knows and I want the wild. Crasis like is the card I'm, I'm basically looking for here with these things. I 
And I don't, I don't mind Girl Chamber Guardian dying to a shock when they have one card in hand. Uh, you know, if, if that card's a shock, like, that's fine. Dies to coil, that's fine. Also, we're doing, we're doing good. Uh, we need. I would like a land drop. There's a land drop. So now let's. I'm casting this first. So we have Krasis for six. I'm gonna cast that first before I tick up on Vivian, so I have more information whenever I'm making my decision. But I'm basically just trying to trying to chain Krasi together. Neat. No, I don't have one Field of Ruin. I have one. Um. I have one Arch of Orozco. I think I'm just gonna go Lyra. Oh gosh, so many of these things. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going Lyra Druid. Yeah, we got this. Feel the wrath of Scala. Get out of here. All right, eight. Draw four cards. No lands? Oh well. All right. So still did pretty good, even though it was a match that I was worried about a little bit. Still did just fine. That gets us 2-0, and, oh, and also time to get that pack. We got a, uh, some new subs there that, that last time, so it's... Uh, <laughs> Time to get a pack. Send them to group therapy. That was their name, group therapy. All right, so we, we've done Allegiance. We did M19. We did Ixalan. Let's go with a Dominaria pack. Now let's go Gills of Ravnica. All right, I'm going to predict... I'm going to predict... Uh, I mean, I think it. I think it could only be Bounty of Might, or I. Th I think, yeah, I think Bounty of Might and Tajik are the two cards I can open up. Hey, what's up, Hude? So let's go with Tajik. Ah, Mythic Wild Card. I guess we can open those up too. There we go. Cocaine, I did not know. What happens once you unlock all the cards, you just get gems. When you open a pack, you just get 20 gems for a rare, 40 gems for a mythic. Mythic wild card, really good. Looks like our opponent has gotten a grip. No Jude, no Judies in the Rakdos midrange deck. You can find the deck list here under exclamation point decks. That's where you can always find all the decks I'm playing. Maya Johnny, no. Alright, so we got a Jun deck with Freebooter. They are booting freely. Alright, 
All right, just getting this thing over Chain Whirler right now. Um, not attacking, though. Phoenix is a problem. That's certainly a problem, game one. I don't have exile stuff or anything. I have to just make a larger... Um... Crisis. Um... Yeah, this game's not looking so good for us. Thanks, Sean. to 10. I guess we can just start with a crisis for two right here. They can just check the freebooters. Doesn't really get us close to a crisis for five, though. Which is what we need. Um, yeah, I guess so. We're not really winning any race right now. We just had a, a real slow hand here on the draw. With our mulligan of like, you know, growth chamber on two, bugler on three. We had we had none of our eight acceleration cards. Um, and yeah, we we're on the draw, and Phoenix is gonna mess us up. Right now, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, yeah, we can crease this for six next turn. Doesn't seem like they have... Okay, they just have a bunch of freebooters. We can... As long as they don't draw removal, we can actually handle this. I guess we can stabilize. Yeah. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's not really a reason not to do seven instead of six, unless us drawing a, a Llanowar Elf would be the reason to, to only do six. We gain three life either way. Um, I don't know if there's a big difference on blocking a four, three, whether we have six or seven. Uh, I can't really think it too much. So I guess I guess I'll just go ahead and do six. We may draw a land or elf. Yeah, a bunch of lands. Get this attack in here. I attack here, they take it. Chain whirler comes back and I chump block with chain with bugler. So basically I'm I'm do I want to do four damage to them to chump block with a bugler? I guess. Yeah. Yeah, this works. Because I, I need to end the game before they find a removal spell for the Krasis, right? Wow. So there we go. These things are flying in trample, so. Huh. Maybe they don't play removal in the main deck. They can kill a 6-6. Six -six. I don't know. Let's get Binding, Seal Away. Those deal with Phoenixes. 
Dawnbringer and Shalai are pretty cool. Bugler seemed not as necessary again. Biogenic Ooze is probably good against everything in their deck except for specifically Rekindling Phoenix. Is this a Vivian matchup? It's a good question. We don't know if they have like Hellkite or what. We have Disdainful Stroke Phoenix. What if we do this? Why Disdainful Stroke over another counter spell? Um, because there are a lot of like four, four mana and more expensive cards uh, in this format that's worth countering with like the new uh, angels and bigger, bigger uh, riot creatures and and uh, like all the stuff with like reclamation, wilderness reclamation, Teferi, all that kind of stuff. More wraths. Yeah, we made we did make Freebooter better, but I, I don't expect um I actually don't really expect Freebooter to be in our opponent's deck here after sideboarding. I actually kinda expect them to take it out. Yeah, you can find the playlist here on Spotify right here. It's my playlist there. Yeah, the set after M20 comes out, then there will be rotation, correct. And that'll be the set this fall. Basically a year from Guilds of Ravnica. I'm expecting Shly to get Lava Coiled as well. Especia expecting this to eat another Lava Coil. Us drawing another Growth Chamber Guardian is not where we want to be. Um, this one doesn't shock. Let's get that fourth Growth Chamber Guardian out of our deck so we don't have to worry about drawing that. Okay. My tea. They could have status statue for Chain Whirler. Absolutely, that's that's a good call. They could they could certainly be doing that. What's a modern card you'd like to see reprinted in future standard sets? Um, Corsair Crew Fix. Of course, going with just my favorite card. Um, so if we activate Shalai, we get these two creatures out of Lava Coil range. Or I could just continue, continue to add to the battlefield. By going Incubation Druid and Jade Light Ranger. 
I'll add to the battlefield. And we're just kind of looking for Krasis's. Incubation Druid? They could have got Jade Light Ranger. Alright, I think our opponent had the status the status combo with Chain Whirler there. And didn't hold priority. I think that should have been all of our creatures dying there. Um yeah, I think they didn't go full control. Um, didn't hold priority by going full control. But yeah, I think I think that's what should have happened there. Which c certainly didn't mean that we would have lost or anything. You know, we had, we had been digging through our deck pretty well. We had a lot of good draws, but uh, yeah. Our opponent not doing it. They decided just to... To pick it up. So there, the combo is um, a one mana card called Status, which is half of um, the card Status statue, which um, gives your creature, gives any creature you control plus one plus one in Death Touch. Um, and so they were going to going to give the uh, Goblin Chain Whirler Death Touch, so that whenever it dealt one damage to all of my creatures. Um, All my creatures would have died. Uh, not yesterday. I didn't do too well, Valerie. Uh, two days ago, we had lots of wins. Yeah, control just gets you into to into that mode, to full control mode. Just hitting control. If you want to stay in it. For a while, you do control shift, but just just the control button's good enough just to get in there for a little bit. I didn't Jade Light there to, uh, just because the mana creatures, I just went down as early as possible to, um, you know, increase my mana as much as I could. Ugh. Come here, buddy. All right. I like like the mana creatures being out as early as possible is is the best uh, for them. All right, so we got another Drake's matchup. So this will be a good test. You know, we played against Drake's a couple matches ago and ended up winning, but our opponent had slower hands in both the games we won. Let's find Hydroid Crisis. There it is. And uh, see if we find another one or an ooze or something like that. Jade Light. So I can Crisis for um, five next turn if I shock in.
Bedevil is most like Bedevil's a better card than Cast Down. It also kind of matters on your curve though. Um, you know, if you have too many threes and not enough twos, that kind of thing. But Bedevil is a better card. I've been seeing an unusual amount of people succeeding without Lanwar Elves to have more impactful cards. Huh. I haven't seen that too much. Lanwar Elves has always has been one of the top two cards in the in the five O lists all the time. But I know with like the Naya value deck I haven't I've been having other other cards instead of Lanwar Elves in. So they have they they do have five uh, spells, you know, like their their graveyard's five cards. It's five spells, so like they can they can spend five mana and uh, now they can you know spend two mana and they can they can upgrade one of these terramanders. So they can they can turn a terramander into a six six. Get your cat butt off the screen. So we're going to be trying to kill our opponent next turn. By going wide here. The in a one v one environment. Do you mean like best of I think you you're probably saying best of one. And probably best of one probably Naya. Yeah, our we're we're like we're not doing too good here still. Uh, like these creatures our opponent has are are really good. Um, like they they have lethal in the air coming back next turn, so I need I need to force them to block some stuff. If I attack out, um, yeah, like it looks like we're we're likely gonna lose this game. Ugh. That blocks that. Block there, block there. Now, like, they, they have lethal. I I think I'm gonna lose this game. Cause the Terramander gets to grow. I 
Like I have nine here, not ten. I guess I guess I needed to wait. Yeah, no, because the problem with attacking with Krasis is Krasis, they block it with the Terramander. They have lethal with the Enigma Drakes. So this is like our only way not to, our opponent not to kill us. Um, right away, but, oh no, the Terramander is dying though. Yeah, no, so we're, we're just dead. Yeah. Well, so so the five five would block the five five, so like it wouldn't trample. Um, the five five would be out of there, and their terramander would be out of there. But they would just they would they would need to just cast any spell. So I guess I guess if I if I do attack with the crisis, it means that they need to cast any spell because they just have to cast a spell to have the enigma drakes go from six to seven. But you know maybe they're they just don't have a spell. Um, it's a low percentage, but yeah, I should have attacked with a crisis. There's just not, not a reason not to. Alright, Hawkeye, you're going to have to move. Hawkeye, you're going to have to move. Come here. Thank you. Alright, let's do that same sideboard we did last time. So, I, yeah, crisis was... I need to attack with Krasis. Um but once one spell would have got me. Um What if I play Knight of Autumns? As like just like four threes to try to attack in. Last time we played other negates instead of these Knight of Autumns. Um, yeah, I'm going to try Knight of Autumns as just four threes. We could put, especially on the play here, where we can have like Land War Elf on turn one and just play in a four three on turn two. No, I don't use Twitter. Um, I'm just going to go bottom. Man, that, that was a really close game. We can have Vivian read next turn. Vivian's really good. Of course, Vivian's basically the only thing I have. Uh, with our mulligan. But we got uh, got a fast start. That's good. Yeah, I can't really afford to get my Vivian countered, so I am just going to pass to Adapt here. Um, didn't want to just Adapt during my turn, because they could just like Shock the Druid in response. Of course, they can still just have Shock now, but at least he uses the mana on their turn.
adapt on their upkeep. Yeah, it's certainly reasonable. Yeah, adapt on upkeep would be would be good. No, I don't like Dovin in this this deck. I don't like Dovin too much. Alright, no shock. Um, let's just play the binding. I could just attack. Honestly, maybe I should just attack. Yeah, I'm just attacking. Uh, next turn, I'll have the mana to be able to go binding, and if they they counter that, then Vivian. I can double spell next turn. <laughs> We've certainly not won yet. Do you think we're going to see a uh, Wilderness Reclamation, Nexus of Fate, or Teferi ban next cycle? No, I don't think so. Hmm. Well, hope they don't have Spell Pierce. Do they really? Oh, come on. I was thinking Negate, how they're holding the two mana up a lot. I was really thinking Negate. Wow. That's rough. Five spells over there now. Yeah, could have been more patient. Played around spell Pierce. Could certainly have been more patient. Is there any chance in the world that Vanifar could be good in the future metagame? Yeah, of course. Vanifar is a powerful card. Um, so yeah, there's certainly a chance. Ugh, this is really bad for us. I can't really imagine us winning this game right about now, but we'll see. Well, that's a start. That's a start. We have our 5-5 five, five block there, 5-5. Five, five. Of course, like another dive down would save their Terramander, or they may have, you know, Beacon Bolt, things like that. Ah.
to have beaten Bolt. But now, hopefully the binding resolves this time. We can cover Spell Pierce, but we can't cover Dive Down. It's the third Dive Down. Because they surveil to Dive Down over. Does this work? They scry to the bottom. Every fight makes me stronger. So our opponent had that opt in hand. I feel like they Sometimes should cast that opt during their turn. Retribution. Um. All right, now I'm at the point of the game where. They want to use a removal spell on this Growth Chamber Guardian this next turn. Like, especially a Shock. I really don't care if it dies to a Shock. Because I'm at three. Vivian has two loyalty. You know, they can Beacon Bolt it, but whatever. If they Beacon Bolt that Growth Chamber Guardian, they're not going to Beacon Bolt like a Hydroid Crisis or something else. You know, they could Coil it, but... That's, you know, that's fine. It's fine with me. Using my mana there on that because hopefully we find a Krasis. Ugh, that's, that one's not fine. I've seen worse. That one I didn't want to die. There's our Krasis. Two, three, four, five, six. Go six. Well, no, I mean, the Krasis is going to die from this Beacon Bolt. We're still we're still behind. The Beacon Bolt kills the Krasis. I mean, we, we just have two 1-1s. One like, we're not, like, necessarily behind, but if they if they had a threat, we would be behind. They did not have a threat. Yeah, we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't have been able to handle another threat. Now this looks like game. Well, Crackling Drake has to chump block. I guess they're not a big fan of that. Yeah, we drew Vivian into Krasis into Lyra. That's works pretty well. So yeah, we still didn't really see anything else to Disdainful Stroke. Um, Knight of Autumn on the draw? Or do I want more negates? Probably want more negates. I guess we need to protect our Binding and Vivian and stuff. Yeah, Krasis is great. Yeah, people are pretty quick to concede. Like, our opponent could have drawn another Crackling Drake into... Or, like, a Beacon Bolt. Either of those, or, like, a Crackling Drake into a Beacon Bolt. Kind of thing. Early concessions not really rewarded online. Like, you, you know, you don't win anything for losing. You just go to another game. But it's not like 
You don't get any reward for going to another game, like for for losing a match. You're you're just losing. Is this deck better than the Gates deck? Um, likely. It needs some work still. Like this is the first, first go at it. Oh, hey, MTG Nerd Girl. So their maps at two. Do I want to binding a treasure map? I mean, the answer is no. I don't want to binding a treasure map. But do I need to binding this treasure map? I guess is the next question. Yeah, we're just longingly looking at that treasure map like, man, I wish... I remember when I used to treasure map it up. I guess treasure map turns into a lot of cards. It does turn into extra mana and a lot of cards. We'll get rid of it. I don't like not hitting a land drop here. Like playing a Jade Light would have been nice to, to go towards a land drop, but it is a, a lot of cards. Yeah, we won that last one when we were at three life. Yeah. All right, so our opponent has dive down. That's where you make that attack is with dive down. I think with Drake's annoying to play that and still have dive down up. One, two. One, two, three, four. Crasis for four. Crasis for four or activate incubation druid and cast jade light ranger. Next turn, I can potentially. I could do J or I could do Crisis for seven next turn potentially. Which I guess seven. Seven still just dies to dive down, I guess not as they'd have to cast another spell. Um. I think, I think I actually want a four. I think I, I want a block. They cast one spell, you were just dead. I mean, well, I can block. I can trade Dawnbringer for a dive down. The problem is Krasis. Oh well, good thing we didn't go for for that for uh, adapting there. They would have killed that. Well, I was gonna say this. The problem is Krasis is dead to a lava coil, and we haven't seen any lava coils from him. So I, I guess I double block. They save one of their things with dive down. Is that better than a single block? Like they they kill the Lyra. Um, yeah, I'll double block. And yeah, we'll have them keep the Enigma Drake around. I'm glad they don't have two dive downs.
All right, Jade Light looking for looking for threats now. Looking for Vivian. Another Krasis. A removal spell. Anything like that. Got to find something soon. Well, that's four cards that were all bricks. Gone. I should have a crisis counter. How many cards have crisis drawn since he started playing? It's been a decent amount. Ugh. Well, that's probably game. And that, that is just game. I do have seal aways. Yeah, those have been those have been good to draw. All right, so we're one on one against Drakes. One on one there. It's not a good matchup for us, but it's not horrendous. You know, like that that game we we drew two flying creatures and an Ixalan's binding throughout that whole game. A Krasis, a, a Lyra, and a, and a Binding. Oh, I need to get the uh, Rakdos midrange up on YouTube. Either mono blue or drakes. Both of them are are the the decks I don't really want to face. The aggressive uh, decks with flying creatures. All right, drakes for a third time. Yeah, we have not faced very much drakes at all the last few days, and three times in this league. All right, Rakdos mid range up there now. Do you think is a Drakes is still a top tier deck of the format? Likely. It's it's still been you know looking just as good as as before. Terramander is a great great uh, great card to add to the decks. How are they doing on spells over here? Two. All right, so we can Vivian minus on the Crackling Drake, and our Vivian should not die to the Terramander swing back. Beasts are much more. No one said restoration was painless. Crisis is perfect. That's what we want. We want our Vivian to go up to find another Crisis. Hopefully. I 
I've seen squirrels hit harder. Hmm. The wild. No, Crazy is really good. Shield. Yeah, it's it's been really impressive for us. Um, all right, I am going to go ahead and. Well, let's see. So we can crisis for four, which is kind of like the a good number, but I kind of want to just adapt and play the Jade Light. I hope they don't have a shock here in response. All right, good. Because, you know, Hydroid crisis on four, that's a good number because it trades with Drakes, but it's also a bad number because of Lava Coil. Um... Just gonna put the ooze over here. I guess what I'm kind of looking for is uh, another, like just Vivian. Vivian and Krasi. Kres I think those are like the cards that I'm looking for right now. Not dead yet. Alright, so there's a Drake. Growth Chamber Guardian, you, you're finding overrated. It hasn't, you know, it's not it's not doing very much in, in these kind of matchups against these Flyers. For us. Hmm. Terramanders are really scary. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we can go Crasis for seven. No, I don't have any Hedontos coins in here. I actually haven't really been drawing a Johnny at all. Um, so we haven't really been using it, but, you know, I like a Johnny a lot with, uh, for a lot of reasons, you know, it's, it's good with our two drops quite a bit with Incubation Druid and Growth Chamber Guardian. It also gets our creatures out of finality range, um, and, uh, helps our, you know, helps pressure control decks, all that kind of stuff. It does a whole lot for us, but, uh, we haven't been drawing it too much. And also we're playing against Drakes where we don't really need it that much. Yeah, Growth Chamber Guardian is not good against Find Finality, that's for sure. Yeah, the Welcome Pack is worth, to, worth it to buy. Yep. Hmm. They are just wasting spells so they can... Row Crackling Drake and adapt these Terramanders for cheap. Or, oh, uh, they must have. They gotta have Beacon Bolt, right? So now they can deal 7 damage to a Krasis? Yeah. But then, that, then that's lethal. Yeah, with that land. And these things. Yeah, that's lethal. Good call. Good play. Alright, so same things like that we have been doing. Binding, seal away. Negate. Hmm. 
Maybe I should just play Shalai. Let's try Shalai. Maybe take out Growth Chamber Guardian. Yeah, Bugler hits Krasis, yep. Yeah, Krasis is a 0-0 zero, zero when it's in your library. Yeah, the Growth Chamber Guardians haven't been spectacular. Shalai does not block very well, no. Um, and it dies to Lava Coil. But it could protect something else from a Beacon Bolt, maybe. Maybe if we have an Ajani in play, that we can add a counter to a Shalai. My favorite deck or color combination so far. So far, Bant here has been my favorite color combination. Uh, this is like my first try at this deck. I don't think like the the numbers are perfect or anything, and this was certainly a matchup uh, I was worried about. Um, and we've played against it three times. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like. I think there's a, a lot of good stuff in being. Alright, so I love how they tapped the island. So it certainly it seems like they don't have Spell Pierce or anything like that to counter Vivian. They, they probably have Shock, though. So if I Vivian minus, they get to Shock my Vivian, which I don't like. So maybe just binding this Enigma Drake. DD stands for Donation Deck. Certainly want at least one more land before I play this Hydroid Crisis. What do I think about Esper Control at the moment? Um, Esper has good cards in it, um, but I haven't been overly impressed with the deck right now, um, but we're so early in the format um, it's kind of hard to have like a really well-tuned control deck but I do like um, I do like you know, mortify and absorb in Kaya's Wrath from the new set. You can't stop nature. And of course, um, Teferi is just an amazing card. Oh yeah, yeah, I played Naya Creatures. Yep. I have a very similar looking uh, uh, Naya value deck to this to this deck.
So I minus Vivian on a Terramander. They dive down it. I negate. And then that's like my whole turn. And then they use their other Terramander to kill my Vivian. That's not good. I could just Krasis for two and draw one card and protect Vivian. Get to draw one card. All right. Beacon Bolt could be a problem. I mean, they could just have like multiple removal spells uh, for this crisis. And I think I I I would like to cash in the Vivian next turn to try to kill this Terramander. I just have to try to kill their their threats. Cuz all right, so if I go if I go with the if I go with the um the Hydro Crisis on 4 there, like they weren't countering the Hydro Crisis. If I go with it on 4, I'm still chump blocking the Terramander, but uh I I'm not able to protect my Crisis against um, a lava coil, um, you know, like they could they could just coil the four four, then kill Vivian, and I can't protect from that at all. That can't help you now. I'm certainly tapping out for this one. Okay, got more removal spells, that's good. Would it be, would it have been better to Vivian the Terramander? No. Um, Crackling Drake grows a whole lot more and is a whole lot scarier than Terramander. Terramander is just going to be a 5-5. Five five. Uh, you know, Crackling Drake can get a whole lot bigger. Um... May need to save binding for like a for a Niv Mizzet. Interesting. I guess it could be Fiery Cannonade. And they get to respond to the Night of Autumn trigger. Okay. So that's the Ixlon's Binding. Ixlon's Binding is our... Um, permanent with the highest CMC. I guess I'm going to keep this forest in hand in case they have another dispersal and I have to discard a card again. We'll be able to discard this forest.
Yeah, Krasis is, is considered 2CMC while it's on the battlefield. All right. Four and one. What control deck do you think is the best right now? Oh, no, it's game three. No, we're not four and one. Uh, probably Esper. Correct. We could have just re discarded the seal away and replayed binding. Correct. Um, I value the removal really highly. Hmm. I don't really want this Ajani in my deck. I also don't really want the other cards. Disdainful Stroke kind of seems like it just counters Crackling Drake, right? It's not very much. I'll have the Ajani because, you know, yeah, I'll just, I'll just have the Ajani still. We can, like, make a Jade Light be able to attack through. That's a 3-2. Pump that up. We can turn on our Mana Creature. They attack Ajani and not attack us, so we get to gain a lot of life. The Guardians of Biogenic Ooze are usually, they're in the main deck. Uh, we have sideboarded them out in this matchup. Yeah, Disdainful Stroke is amazing against specifically Crackling Drake. Not really anyth anything else in their deck. Hmm. Enigma Drake and Lava Coil, they're like, no, I don't want either of those. Do they like mold a five or something? Give me that. Yeah, Niv can't be countered, so having Disdainful Stroke for Niv doesn't help us out too much. What do I think of Chromium and Esper right now? I don't really like it that much. Chromium's just so slow. It's like, it helps win, it usually helps you win games that you're gonna win kind of thing. I don't know. It costs so much mana. Hmm. I would like to binding Crackling Drake. Crackling Drake is the, the card to binding. I'm not going to play a Krasis for two, just to gain one life, draw one card, have my Krasis die to shock. Krasis is too, too valuable, um, kind of overall. I need it to be at least four. I, I need my Krasis to tussle with Drake's and draw two. So I guess we're just holding up this negate. They play Niv Mizzet here. We can binding that. All right, we're binding that. I could Vivian it. Try Vivian. Try Vivian. I've lost so much already. Okay. I won't lose now we're 4 1. There we go. Yeah, I like how Vivian was going to certainly resolve that turn. We didn't have to worry about like Vivian getting countered that turn. 
and uh, the next turn we could have like the conc the uh, Ixalan's binding with the negate backup, um, in case our opponent drew like a crackling drake or something something like that. Um, Yeah, I mean, our, our opponent was kind of under the gun there. That's why they had to just run that Niv-Mizzet out there. I'm sure that wasn't there. You know, that wasn't ideal for them. All right. Uh, four wins, we get 1,700 gold um, and at least one rare. Two wins, we're getting 2,100 gold and at least two rares. So this is the final boss. Uh, last match of this league, either we win... And we get to our five win plateau, or we lose and we pick up our second loss. So final boss time. Yep, and it's a thousand gold to enter. For the gold, it goes zero with zero wins, and then five hundred with one win, a thousand with two wins. You get your entry fee back with two wins, uh, and then fifteen hundred, seventeen hundred, twenty one hundred. Final boss. Hopefully we're not playing against Drakes again. Can we go back to playing against Drakes, please? <laughs> uh, Turmoil Land or Elf on the play is so good. I'm so jealous of my opponent right now. Yeah, I lost this one. It's, it's random, Lone Drifter, but... Uh, certainly like to pretend the final boss is harder. Had a wonderful hand, though. <laughs> Thanks, J Train. Okay, um, Land War Elf, not on time. I would not say that was a timely Land War Elf. Um, yeah. Yeah, Don's Climb is is a really strong card, and it's a yeah. A lot of like just the flip enchantments were all like pretty cool. Search Rose Canto is like the one that's like just a little too powerful, and so it's a little obnoxious. But I need Night of Autumn there. I can't stop Climb from killing me. Hmm. So we know they have Incubation Incongruity as like removal. A Johnny, of course, is not good when you're behind. We are on the play here, so it's a, it's a better chance that we're going to be ahead. Um, the thing is, maybe I need to just be uh, sideboarding a little, or sorry, keeping hands that are um, you know a little faster. Like maybe I can't just keep three drop on the draw.
I'm not sure if I actually like this angel plan. I mean, the angel plan is pretty good. Do I really need Knight of Autumn for just Hadana's Climb and nothing else? Seems slightly unnecessary. I mean, I guess I'm just trimming on buglers. I got to trim something. Um, the song I just played a little bit ago is called Those Who Fight Further uh, from the Final Fantasy VII soundtrack. All right, now we have a, now we have a mana creature of our own. The best five, five x deck that we have played in best of three so far um i think the most the most well-tuned one is the mardu angels um yeah i think that that deck's really strong oh So I want to play Shalai into Vivian. I guess we'll just go like this. It's just not, you know, guaranteed that we'll have Vivian next turn. So let's just get the land off in play and kind of guarantee that we'll have Vivian next turn. Okay, and we'll go ahead and destroy the climb with Vivian. Does mean that I don't have a good block. Um, I can chump block with the land war elf. I suppose to keep Vivian alive. the wrath of Scala. Not a bad draw. I've seen things that would break someone like you. Well, how shall I be able to protect Lyra? I again don't have a good good block on this. The two two growth chamber guardian here. have this Vivian go ahead and, and die and just minus and get rid of this climb. Sometimes restoration means retribution. Alright, and, and uh, hopefully Shalai and Lyra can take this home for us. So y'all having a good, uh, good Saturday night? Y'all are having a good weekend. Mesmerizing Benthid. Advanced Angels.
Magic, WWE, Royal Rumble, and our streams always a great weekend. Nice. Every fight make draw and Sasha says I'm sick, but better than yesterday. There you go. It's always good to be better than yesterday. Um I don't think I'm gonna I don't think I'm gonna do Mardu control tonight, Philly Willy. Um Yeah, it's already ten. Mardu control is a league, there'll be a really long league. My normal stream time is from 3 to 10, so we're already through that with just our three leagues here. I'm going to have to ask Radio Pinball when another time to play it. Radio Pinball, are you in here? Yeah, it could turn into a 12-hour stream. Certainly could. Um... Yeah, I want this Knight of Autumn. Destroying Hadana's Climb is, like, necessary. If we can destroy Hadana's Climb, you know, like, we're, we're going to be okay kind of thing. Or we'll be better, at least. Tomorrow would be fine? Okay. Do you, do you have a preference tomorrow on 1st, 2nd, 3rd, or 4th? Mayonetter subbing here with the tier one sub. Let's get some hype in the channel for our new subscriber. Thank you so much, Mayonetter. Mayonetter. Third or fourth? Okay, I'll have you on, on third just in case for tomorrow. So we're at 53 subscribers that towards the next one. Gotcha. West Coast over there. Alright, good to remember. Hmm. We have turn three Vivian. Hope no climb for the opponent. All right, good. No climb. Um, do I want Shalai in play first? Do I want to just... All right, if I just uh, Incubation Druid Adapt, um, next turn we have eight man available. We can crease this for six. Yeah, I think that's that's the plan. So I'm just going to Incubation Druid Adapt. Crisis for six next turn. Correct, yeah, Vivian only has Hexproof when she's on the battlefield from July. Yeah. So, of course, they could have a Vivian to shoot down Krasis. Um, yeah, I hope not. But that's a possibility. And uh, next turn, though, okay, we can go Shalai plus Vivian here, or we could just go Krasis for seven. Shalai for four plus Krasis for three. So they're at, f they're at 14. Hmm. 
Wait, is that right? Yeah, Shalai, four mana, then I could still play Krasis for three. No, I, so yeah, I, I could have double blocked the Growth Chamber Guardian and traded my Land War Elf for it, but I, I wanted the Land War Elf because I wanted this this Krasis for six. Honestly, the mana is, is really important in this matchup. So if they're at 14, and then we would put six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 power on the battlefield where Shalai would be able to activate and kill them. Um, so we are threatening lethal next turn, and they didn't have anything this turn to deal with the flyer. So I think that's, that's going to be my plan. So let's go ahead and... Play that, Krasis for three. And kill them in the air next turn. There we go. All right, final boss defeated. top with our flyers hydroid crisis real good yeah it was a good good day five one five one five one that's why these and with some some slower decks too which is why the we only got through three leagues today in seven hours uh but yeah we destroyed final bosses this week absolutely cool yeah two days ago we did, we did a 12 hour stream two days ago and we were 33 and 4 throughout the, the whole stream, including, you know, like donate, going through donation decks and everything. Lots and lots of 5.0s and 5.1s um, so far. Uh, if you want to see any of those re replays, especially me logging off here, check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash Todd Stevens MTG. Just put it in the chat there. Uh, that's where you can find all the replays, including the, the two decks we played earlier are our are already up right now uh, as far as this deck goes to kind of have a little bit of conclusion here a johnny didn't really seem too necessary i think we maybe maybe we do need a little bit more interaction in that slot um but shalai lira were, were good in the sideboard i liked our i liked our sideboard quite a bit i think a johnny was kind of our worst card bugler is you know not really like i don't know we didn't really have the, the matchups for it as much um you know, it's great against control and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, Ajani and Biogenic Ooze. Basically these three, Bugler, Ajani, Ooze. We, we just never really use these uh, too much, that, that league. Um, but Krasis, Druid, Druid, Krasis, Vivian, those are all awesome. So there we go. Uh, you're welcome, Engineer No Girl. So yeah, so thanks everybody for watching. Um, of course, if you are watching this on YouTube later, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you for the next video.